Morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna to continue our series on DMR. Actually, we're gonna start it from the beginning. This is gonna be a multi-part series where I'm gonna to try to share with you my journey looking at digital mobile radio or DMR for the purpose of using it for preparedness. Now, a couple things to get out of the way. One, I am very new to DMR. I only have about four to five weeks of experience with it. And number two, if you're an amateur radio operator, this is probably not the video for you. I am actually looking at DMR through the lens of preparedness and as a prepper and have no plans on doing most of the hamster stuff with DMR. All right, folks, so I'm a firm believer in selecting the right tool for the job, and that certainly applies to communication. Over the last four years, I have been primarily working analog radio, and I have looked at all of my radios as tools. Uh, I've been very effective in terms of making targeted contacts that's at the community level, at the city level, at the county, state, region, and across the country. So I encourage you guys to check out my No Random Contacts series. For all of those, I used different radios, different radio services, different antennas, and different techniques and modes to make those happen. Now, I did identify one gap. All of those actually kind of take place over the air in the clear, which means it's easy to eavesdrop. Now, the problem that I'm trying to solve with this series is, What's a good radio service to increase and improve our operational security? And there will be layers of how to make our conversation a little bit more secure, at least as secure as we can uh, while still being legal. And then to actually, we're not going to go in that direction. We're going to stay legal. All right, guys, like I said, um, I'm in it for short range, secure or more secure communications. And we're going to touch on an area that I typically don't like to prescribe to, and that is security by obscurity. And really, my goal is to eliminate as much of the listening population as possible. What you'll find when you look at radio and the prepper scene is that almost everybody is rocking these Chinese Baofeng radios. This is the UV5R. These can be had for $20 to $25 on Amazon. You order it today, you can get a fleet of these tomorrow. They're easy to program, the software is free, um, but everything is sent over the clear on VHF and UHF. You can actually uh, not legally do all this, but it is possible with these radios to transmit on multiple types of radio services uh, from amateur radio to MERS to FRS and GMRS. We're not going to get into that. Point is, all of that communication happens over the clear, and you've got the lowest barrier to entry with these $25 radios. So, this is the largest portion of the eavesdropping population, uh, in my opinion. So amateur radio, for example, we also, uh, our workhorses are on VHF and UHF, two meters and 70 centimeters. So when we send traffic over those, the Baofeng army can pick that up pretty easily with basically very little training. Uh, I've also been a fan in the past of using non-standard uh, bands or bands that are underutilized is probably a better way to explain it. And that's like the 220 megahertz band and six meters. Uh, that's still over the air analog, so you could still pick it up pretty easily. So when I was trying to solve this problem, I'm like, what other options are available at my disposal where I can train with them when times are good with my amateur radio license? And I knew that digital radio might be the way to go. And there were a few options for going digital. And the reason for to go to digital is that when you transmit on a uh, video or radio that does digital voice, the Baofeng army can't listen. In fact, let's stop this video right now and let's go ahead and do a transmission using a digital mode and we'll see what it sounds like to the Baofeng users. All right, we're gonna turn on the Baofeng. Mode. And we're gonna transmit DMR on this Motorola. Test one, two, three, three, two, one. All right, so that's not real operational security. Uh, if you end up getting a digital radio, then you're able to uh, pick up that communication. The big difference is that when we start to look at digital radio, we increase the price point and the barrier to get into that market. Uh, this is an Anytone D878 UV2 Plus, and this radio, I think, ran me about 300 bucks. So more than 10 times the price as one of these radios. 
Um, so again, anybody else that has a DMR radio, if they program it correctly, uh, they'd be able to eavesdrop. But again, the goal here is not to have this be completely secure communication. This is the ability to reduce the likelihood of the largest audience from picking up your communication, like the gangbangers down in Phoenix rocking these bad boys when stuff goes sideways. So the other thing is, why did I settle on DMR? Because there are a few other digital voice modes out there. So Yesu has one called C4FM or Yesu System Fusion. Uh, I think it's uh, ICOM and Kenwood have D-Star and then there is DMR. The reason why I went with DMR is because it's more of a standard and I will find them on more radios. And uh, for example, this Anytone, uh, I'm probably gonna sell it after the series and I show you how to program it, mostly because it doesn't meet all of my criteria for what I wanna do. And some of the land mobile radios do have higher quality standards, still relatively inexpensive and give me value. So by going with DMR over the other digital modes, I found that I can actually look at, for example, Motorola radios um, to provide that, that coverage for me. So another area of operational security is that you want to minimize the amount of time that you're transmitting in the event that you have someone that has capabilities to do location finding. Again, the bar to do that is quite a bit higher, so most of the thugs out there running the Baofangs are not gonna be able to do that. But one thing about DMR as a standard that I like is that it also can do data. And these actually have the ability to do text messages from the front panel, so you can enter it like an old school flip phone from you know pre-2007 or 2008. And it's just a quick tone burst or set of tones that uh, are sent over the air and the other station picks it up. So you're only transmitting for a very small amount of time. Um, and this actually applies to all of the other digital standards. But again, that's another reason why DMR, just to help improve our operational security. So let's talk a little bit about the tools. So now that I knew I wanted DMR, it was a matter of looking at some of the radios. So I bought this Anytone D878 UV2 Plus last November and put it in a drawer because there was the perception by the internet that uh, DMR is hard to get into. I'm gonna help demystify that because I actually decided to invest some time to learn DMR and basically We'll walk you through the process of how I learned it. We'll get into that in a bit. But the reason why I picked the Anytone uh, 878 UV2 Plus is because it is one of the most popular radios in this class. So there's a large portion of uh, support base for you. Number two, it's a good transitional radio to take you from analog to the digital world because it supports both analog capabilities and digital. Uh, this one also has built-in APRS support that both allows you to transmit and receive. Unfortunately, in my opinion, the APRS execution and implementation on this is completely broken, so I won't be using it for that any, anymore. Um, I, I'm really disappointed in the product manager who worked on the APRS uh, implementation for this device. Uh, it also has, and this was kind of the one that sold me on it, the ability to do AES 256-bit encryption. Now, this is not legal on the amateur radio bands. Um, it's really only legal if you have your business license. I actually have done that already. But the problem with the Anytone is that they have a broken implementation of the 256 uh, AES bit encryption. Uh, they are working on it. Uh, the good news is that you can potentially upgrade these with the new firmware fix. Um, so kind of disappointed about APRS and also the encryption. It's also not a terribly rugged radio. Uh, normally I wouldn't have bought this, but the fact that it claimed to have those two features was the reason why I bought it. So I will be selling this uh, as soon as I'm done with this series. Now, uh, we're also gonna take a look at some other options. Again, I'm a big fan of tools and not toys. So I decided to take a look at the Land Mobile Radio or LMR space and wanted something that had a low barrier to entry, had DMR capabilities, and had the ability to do a lot of really interesting things. So I settled on this Motorola XPR6550. Uh, this actually is more of a duty style radio. Uh, it is uh, submersible and has a lot of other features. Now, it doesn't have all the capabilities of the Anytone, but it does in a lot of ways have more interesting capabilities. Um, I wanna show you guys stuff that I'm doing for small team tactics in a very late episode. So 
Bottom line is DMR is kind of a tool that I'm looking for for uh, close in, more secure communication in order to defeat the Baofeng army. Now, for this series, I actually want to, in the next set of videos, walk you through the beginning. So we're gonna start with the Initone 878, and I wanna talk about DMR programming from the perspective of a prepper. So to transition to it, the first video is gonna be how do we download the software, how do we program this radio, but I'm only gonna do it for the analog side of the house. And the reason why I did it that way is because I wanna be able to use the concepts that I know from analog operation and just move it over to this radio. So by the time I did that for a few weeks, I knew how to, the basic functions of the radio, I knew how to program it in software, and I felt pretty comfortable. The next thing that I did, and this will be the video that follows that one, is program it for what I'm gonna call the DMR prepper use case. And my use case is fairly simple. No, this will not be connected to the internet. I just want it for simplex, that is radio to radio communication. And how to go through that programming exercise so that we can defeat, again, the Baofeng army. Now I do plan to potentially introduce a, a repeater system here to increase the range. But again, that is a repeater system that I will actually own or my group will own and maintain. The last part of the series is we're gonna be ditching the Anytone radios for DMR because I have stumbled across the Motorola line of radios. Um, and yeah, there's other standards out there or other manufacturers like EF Johnson and Hytera, but I'm gonna go into why the Motorola radios. But at the highest level, these things have some pretty cool over the air networking features that allow me to kill the radio, uh, basically ask another radio for its GPS location. I can send messages out. Heck, I'm writing some really interesting dispatch software that will allow me to track all my guys in the field, will allow me to basically establish bounding boxes or geofences to let them know when they go in and out of a location. So a lot of fun stuff. So basically that's the journey I'm gonna take you through. Let's look at DMR first by programming it for analog. Then let's go ahead and program it for digital for the prepper use case. Let's extend the coverage by using our own repeater network. And then let's fully move on to the land mobile radio stuff. We'll, we'll talk about some of the other capabilities. Heck, I might even talk about the process I went through to get my business license so that I can run encryption now legally. All right, guys. Um, next one should be fun. Appreciate you. Oh, and the guys at Buy Me A Coffee. Uh, you guys are the only crowd that will be getting uh, basically proof of concept code that I'm building on the Motorola stuff. It's not gonna be the full product, but I'm gonna give you guys some tech samples before the end of the year. So I appreciate all your support. You guys are making it easier for me to get one step closer to making this be my full-time job. I'm the tech prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.